So pretty interesting on that. Um, what's your favorite sci-fi show? Um, I love Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. See, I need you guys here because I forgot about Taken. And I did forget about Hitchhiker's Guide. I absolutely love that movie. Um, actually, my daughter uh, read the book and turned me on to that. So uh, we both love the movie. She absolutely uh, loves it. So... Uh, what's your favorite uh, sci-fi movie and show? <laughs> yeah, mornings. Um, I should do. I should do a coffee thing in the morning just to get everybody awake. <sighs> I'd be like, "Hey, everybody, wake up!" And get everybody up and then go back to bed. That would be good. That's Lori's forte. Uh, partner in cry crime does the morning. <laughs> <coughs> so anyway, um, where was I? I lose my train of thought here. I was somewhere else. We're going to go into, uh, some of the directors a little bit, um, as far as, um, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna start with uh, Star Wars. Well, yeah, that's one. Um, what do you? Uh, okay, comparatively, um, as the old Star Trek uh, movies, of course, with William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, those were so good. As opposed to the new ones with the new um, uh, Captain Kirk and stuff, I, I I think they did an excellent job in reviving that. Um, as far as, um, I mean, they kept the the Star Trek uh, Trekkies going. I mean, I think they did an excellent job with those movies. You know, Chris Pine, uh-uh-uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, close, uh, we discussed that too, about Close Encounters and how um, the government actually wrote Steven Spielberg a letter telling me telling him how dangerous it might be to be making this film. So... 20 pages, I might add, and um, Steven Spielberg was like, well, got their attention, apparently, you know, and uh, must be something to it then if they're, you know, trying to get involved. That's true, but for the time, if you think about it, the original Star Trek for the time, beam me up, Scotty, I mean, uh, that was the thing. I mean, who saw that back then? Um, so... Look at Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap is is my perfect example of, was it just uh, pulled out of somebody's butt about quantum physics and leaping through time? I don't think so. Um, I, uh, what do you think? Was it just ahead of its time? Or is there something more to it uh, than just uh, fantasy? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I like the new ones too, though. I really do. I think they did an excellent job in um, keeping the Star Trek series alive, ser seriously. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see the new one because Sasha's in it, right? <laughs> Quantum Leap, yes. Scott Bakula and uh, Dean Stockwell. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Quantum Leap, my mother loved that, that show, really loved that show. So, of course, we watched it. It was on. Um, but was that, was that as far-fetched as we think? There's my partner in crime, the morning person. So, yeah, was it as um, far-fetched as we think? So, as, you know, uh, you know, like Star Trek beam me up, you know? Uh, yeah, I think we all did. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's been around for a very long time. So, I, I don't think, you know, this was just the... Uh, Oh, gee, I just came up with it while I was eating my Cheerios thing. What about Battlestar Galactica? I mean, that was another... Sh my mother loved Lauren Green in that. Um, the original Battlestar Galactica, like Tesla, absolutely. Um, uh, but, yeah, Battlestar Galactica, the original, was really, really good. Um... I thought it was anyway. Um, yeah, Tesla. 
Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, for the time. Yeah, Richard. Oh, yeah, Richard. I can remember his name. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, let's see. I'm going to talk about George Lucas and um, uh, his Star Wars, his strange inspirations for this. Oh, I forgot about the Voyagers. Oh, yes. Um, what was the other one? Oh, gosh darn it. Um, geez, it wasn't Firefly. What's the other ones that were on? Oh, I can't think of it. Um, a strange inspirations regarding Star Wars, George Lucas. Um, oh, before I forget, I want to tell you about James Cameron, um, uh, about his science fiction, um, whole thing that's going to be in april um so we need to uh, as soon as we watch that then we'll uh talk about that after you know it's over because you're gonna have george lucas on there um of course james cameron steven spielberg arnold schwarzenegger um you're gonna have so many people on there about sequel sequel oh my god i don't even remember that one michelle no it was they were in space and they had this uh um you know, kind of broken down spaceship, and uh, oh my God, I can't think of it. Can't think of it. Anyway, George Lucas is basically um, he basically worshipped Akira Kurosawa and his legendary film, The Hidden Fortress. Do you remember The Hidden Fortress? That was with uh, uh, now his name escapes me from Criminal Minds. Uh, Thomas Gibson, The Hidden Fortress. Um, this, which so much of the Star Wars universe was spawned, was from that movie that he absolutely loved. Um, and that Flash Gordon flashed through his imagination long before Luke Skywalker was a twinkle in his eye from far, far away. No, not Babylon 5. There was another one. Lost in Space. No. Um, uh... I can't think of it. I'll think of it sooner or later. When I do, you all know. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, yes. <laughs> what did you think of the new uh, film of that? Uh, the new uh, Lost in Space. They didn't do too bad, I guess. Anyway, um, in that Yoda is so zen because he was influenced by meditative monks. And that makeup artist looked to the porcelain faces of Japanese geishas when it came to putting a face on Queen Amadea's face. Did you know this? Uh, yeah, and the doctor, Deep Space Nine. No, uh, it wasn't Firefly, but there was another one. It was kind of a comedy, too. Gosh darn it. Anyway. Some of the space age ideas Lucas and his staff blasted off with are not so obvious. Um, unexpected inspiration uh, comes from things as random as exotic dishes. Uh, inside humor, Dusty finds collecting cobwebs in the back of an antique store. Chewbacca and the Ewoks may look like what we call canines on this planet, but what breeds? Uh, while well, real fascist empires influenced the ideology and battle tactics of the empire, did they also influence their uniforms? Where did that bizarre thing Lando wears to disguise himself in Jabba's lair even come from? Uh, strap yourself in, guys, uh, in the Millennium Falcon, because finding out 11 strange Star Wars origins might surprise you more than you think. That opening text crawl that they do, at the beginning of Star Wars, it projects blue text reading long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. You know what movie you're watching. But you would be able to tell easily if you time warp back to 1936 and that screen was black and white. 
you be looking at the opening of Flash Gordon. No, no. Anyway, uh, while George Lucas wasn't around to experience a mysterious world hurtling from the skies, the sci-fi obsessed 12 year old did watch the series as part of Adventure Theater. From there spawned that signature text crawl that the entire galaxy now believes is exclusively uh, a Star Wars thing. So there you go. Where did Chewbacca come from? Uh, it only makes sense that an extremely hairy extraterrestrial Bigfoot would be inspired what is known as Earth as a dog. George Lucas only had to look at his canine companion, Indy, who was riding shotgun with him on the way to the studio to see an overgrown, gun-toting sidekick to a space cowboy. The Wookiee species was about to come into existence if you zero in on Indy's facial markings. It's as if Chewie looked into a mirror from another planet. While it might be a stretch that Lucas imagined him being a civilized, as being civilized, since his only method of communication is brazen growls, and what sometimes sounds like a foghorn, mutating an Alaskan Malamute into a bipedal alien is just the next phase of evolution. Blash, yeah. And C-3PO's brass body. At artfully intelligent, artificially intelligent, C-3PO is a metallic reflection of a Kurosawa character. But how did the concept get po polished in brass? 3PO is actually inspired by an earlier model. The droid you're looking for is evil silver anthropomorphic robot Maria from the German expressionist sci-fi film. Remember Metropolis Ascension? No, that wasn't it either. I have to look it up. Uh, but C-3PO is actually taken from Metropolis. Do you remember uh, that black and white film, Metropolis, that sci-fi film? That's where C-3PO came through. Uh, that's where the similarities end, though, as Maria gives people deadly hallucinations. Uh, they wouldn't be compatible on a dating site at all. Um, as for those chronically squeaking limbs, the brass man takes after the tin man, of course, and the Wizard of Oz. So he's a combination of uh, Maria from Metropolis and the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Um, his face has a creepy origin, a steampunkish 19th century firefighter smoke helmet that could pass for a double of the droid's head. Go figure. Oh, what about Darth Vader's helmet? Doctor? No, Doctor Who. Did you love Doctor Who? Yeah, Metropolis. Yeah, that was really ahead of its time, or was it? Um, these are things, you know, we may never know for sure. Oh, uh, you know, Metropolis, seriously. I saw something today, and it's so true. And this is so true. I mean, you figure, okay, we're thinking 1990. Okay, we're thinking, okay, 20, 000, you know, 2010 and over. We're going to have these, you know, futuristic buildings and uh, um, and maybe flying cars and all this stuff. And what do we have? People eating Tide Pods. Are you are, are you serious? I mean, it, it, <laughs> all our dreams are shattered. I'm sorry. The bubble is burst. If we could go back and see into the future what we'd be doing, I think we wouldn't get here. What do you think? Um yeah, 1980. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, uh, the helmet of Darth Vader is synonymous with pure, unadulterated evil. Uh, you know how you're always hearing the labored breathing of Lord Vader because he can never take that thing off if he wants to survive? That's a ghost of the um, oxygen helmets worn by the subterranean race of Uranians now from the 1935 film, The Phantom Empire. Yeah, we could have. Uh, yeah, our futuristic buildings, and, you know, we had all these things that we're thinking. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Space 1999. I had forgotten about that one, too. Good one, Lori. Yes. Wow. Michelle, that's funny. That's hilarious. Uh, but instead of, you know, coming up with these, you know, futuristic things we were hoping would happen, they're eating Tide Pods. Well, I, you know, 
Here we are.